I'm in the studio, uh, I usually, it, it, my technique seems, it seems that I, I hit harder one for sure, just because the acoustics of the place is just so perfect that you love the way the drums finally sound. And, um, you know, you're, you're all hyped up in the energy to just put something down on, for the people. It, it just makes it more exciting. You just come in there and hyped up. I can't say that uh, my live show isn't the same type of, you know, passion and excitement. But live show, I, I, I find that uh, I, um, I usually do what I feel like doing at that time. As long as the band knows that the song going to start and end where it always starts, they always know that depending on how the audience or the crowd is, is carrying on that I do things to provoke that. You know, whether it be play, you know, a riff that's supposed to be 200 beats per minute and I cut that down to halftime, they'll know that I didn't just lose my mind and black out and some old craziness. They know that I'm doing it. All you got to do is stay in the cut like you're supposed to and we'll come in and get out of this, you know, as, as it should be. And that's the way, you know, the live aspect of playing, that has been lost, you know, in the past, the older musicians, they improvised. That was, that was what the live show was about, like a James Brown or any of that, you know, that level of, of artists, you improvised. If he snapped a finger, the band stopped. If he did whatever, the band started or held up. That's something that we today don't really take pride in doing, which being in suffocation, it's, it's, it's a little harder to do because it's such a technical approach to, you know, writing and playing it, but um, by all means open to do that. I think it'll make the show different for every state or city you go and the people will say, I heard that song, but they did something totally ridiculous on here that I can't believe. You know, and they still pulled it off as sick as ever. So the studio is a place where it's supposed to sound the best it's ever going to sound. With that said, I can tell you 100% suffocation has the black cloud over him, and we've never had an album sound as it should sound. So um, usually we take it to where when we get on stage, we make sure that our stage sound is what's supposed to be, and the people hear us as we intended it to be. But we just know we always go into the studio with intent to be to sound totally sick. But suffocation has always been um, um, we put what we what we write on on wax, of course. But we've always been a band that live is where we show you who we are. You know, any song we've written or recorded live, you hear it as it was meant to be, and there's no flubs. You rarely catch us slipping and, and sounding ridiculous, that's just not the way it is, because we had no choice. Coming up all these years, it was always, oh well, the album sounds kind of crazy, we better pull it off live, and we do. That's something we've always been, we've always been more um, devastating, if you will, or in your face live than albums have ever been. and. And that's good for us because the majority of, you know, bands out there you may find sound so amazing on record, but come on stage and are pulling tricks and gimmicks and didn't actually play what the record is portraying, you know, so, you know, it is what it is. It, the people know that, that we're, we're serious and we mean well every time with, with what comes out and you know, hopefully, you know, our next album will, all we could ask for is hopefully our next album will be better sounding than our last. The drum lessons I, that I give, I, I take pride in the fact that, one, the students came because they wanted to learn what it is I do. They're not just there to learn rudiments, this, that, or the other. They actually want to learn what Mike Smith does, how he does it, and how it became. With that said, I've always been a hard hitter, so I try and, and make the, the student comfortable enough to where, one, he's not fighting his body, he's not struggling, but he has learned how to use exactly what he needs to pop through a drum and make it loud and, and prominent and definite. So I teach them power. I teach them how to 
approach the drums in such a relaxed way that every one of your limbs can play separately from the other and you can do whatever. You don't have to be a slave to any one limb. What you learn on your right side, you must be able to play on your left side. I don't care if it's double bass blast or whatever it is, you need to practice left and right and make your body ambidextrous. So I teach them. That's, that's a, a, a method that I try and get them is to make their whole body part of the drum set. With that said, they learn. They learn it quick. It takes them time to do it, but that's important to me. I need my drummers to be powerful. I need them to think out the box with the type of beat they're adding. Don't do what anyone is expecting you to do. Flip it. That's your job as a drummer. Flip it and be sing singular from every other instrument that's being played. Because in this genre, which I teach is extreme drumming, everybody's looking at you, especially the musicians, with a fine tooth comb. They're looking directly at you to see if you're playing what's on the record and if you're playing it right. If you're faking it, you're not going to last in death metal or extreme metal. And that's important for me. It's a pride thing. I have pride in what I play. I want any student who come through me to leave and say, one, Mike does not play. He doesn't fool around at all. He told me I straight up went up there like a grandmother and don't play right. But guess what? He showed me how to do what he said. That's it. It's just really pride. I know I have a technique, I know I have a style, I put it on the kids, they wanted to know that anyway, and I put it to the level that they are and let them grow with it. As long as you show them the basics, they will grow with it. Don't give them any shortcuts. Being in it 20 some odd years, I have a lot to thank, a lot of people to thank, but I'm only going to thank the few that are here right now who really helped to push and keep me moving right now. It's important to on a daily basis. So I have my equipment endorses D drum, Minel cymbals, Evan skins, Axis pedals, DB shoes, Vic Firth sticks. All of you are really understood what was important for a musician in the industry and that's to at least give them their equipment so they can show themselves. And and they do that. They do that yearly. They don't look back on it. They give it to me. I play it and because they give it to me, I'm still here, you know. So if nothing else, if I don't become a millionaire from this, and don't be fooled because I'm not a millionaire. I may have made a million, but I don't have any hold of it right now. Um, if the money isn't there, just know that I have all my equipment, and that's, that's the most important thing I can say is I thank you for that. Thank you for the support of that, and my fans, of course, the fans of Suffocation and the fans of, Su of Mike Smith in general. I, I wake up every day knowing that when I get online or whatever outlet I'm in, I'm going to be talking to people who know me and have an impression of me. And with that, I take pride in knowing that, one, if you talk to me, you'll find that we may talk way longer than you expected to talk, which is proof that I'm not on that plateau. I never claim to be, and I just want you to know something about me when you leave. And it, you trust it will be the truth. With that, that's my gift to anybody for giving me the gift of being my fan, being my sponsor. My gift is to make sure you don't leave with a misconception of what the industry is, how it is I got here, what it is I do in it, and what I intend to do with it any further. So for all the interviewers, all the magazines, everybody involved in, you know, these are important, you know, interviews you you better speak wisely when you're asked or you just wasted a whole platform right there and so I thank you cameraman and all you guys for knowing that I'm worth something to even be sitting Absolutely. in the chair right now at Killingsworth <laughs> studio in Massive People. That's it man. I'm grateful for everybody who's around me because I definitely don't have fools around me. I weeded that out years ago. Everybody around me has a purpose. They are at a level that I need. And when there's no weak links, you can trust everybody's going to move forward.